Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Yona. I am a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM and today I am making a video that you guys have requested for me and that is the resources that I use for the APM Relief part one boards. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through each topic that is tested on the boards and just list out the resources that I use for each of those topics. A little disclaimer for you guys. These are the resources that I used. And just to be clear, you don't have to use these resources, but these are the resources that I felt were good enough for me to pass the boards. But there are a multitude of resources out there that you guys could be using in order for you to just get a solid grasp for content. In addition, I think, just wanna be very clear and transparent with you guys, I think the best way to study for boards, if you have the time, is to actually look at the curricular guide that is presented by the APMLE website and do that curricular guide because it has every single concept that is allowed to be tested on for the boards. And they have it ranked from highest yield to lowest yield. So if you decide to do that curricular guide and whatever resource you use to cover all those different concepts, I think that is the safest way for you to pretty much guarantee you a pass on the boards. Just wanted to get that out there for you guys. But let's just jump straight into this video. First topic, most important topic for the boards, lower extremity anatomy, worth 25% of the boards. For this, a lot of my studying actually came from my school notes. My LEA professor did a phenomenal job presenting the information to us and just looking it back at the notes that I took as a first year student, I thought that was really good for most of my studying as well as there was this old CSPM packet review guide that I used as well. In addition, I bought these flashcards on Amazon, I think it was $50, these LEA flashcards which were created by two podiatric medical students from Temple and these flashcards were a great supplement to my studying because they did a great job in actually separating different topics for LEA and I thought the embryology section alone for this was great because I didn't take great embryology notes for my LEA back when I was a first year. So that was great. And in addition, Scholl's LEA packet. I think that was also another great addition because some of the things that are taught from different podiatric medical schools can be quite different. And just looking at what they were taught and seeing what material was presented to them was actually very beneficial for me to add that to my notes that I was presented in school. So overall, those were the resources I used for LEA. Second topic, general anatomy. 13% of the boards. Big portion of my studying came from the study guide and most of my school notes that my human anatomy professor made for us. I think school notes came in clutch for this and the review package she made specifically for the boards for us was very beneficial. It was about 100 to 150 pages long and with the amount of time that I had, which wasn't too much time, it was perfect for that time. Also, board vitals. I don't think I mentioned it for LEA, but board vitals, board vitals, board vitals. Board vitals is an online site that has a just a huge question bank for particularly the APMLE part one boards. And our school actually gave us all a free trial for it during our time of studying. So it has over 900 plus questions. So doing questions in addition to your content learning is really crucial because questions really do test you if to see if you're really learning the stuff, as well as the explanations, the explanations for the reason why that was a particular answer to a certain question is also a nice added benefit to add on to your notes as well. Third topic, physiology, 13% as well of the boards. And for that, I honestly didn't put too much stress on physiology and the reason why is because as I mentioned before in my previous videos 
I tutored a lot of physiology. When I was studying for boards, I tutored for about a year of uh, physiology. So a lot of my content was very strong from just tutoring. So I encourage you guys to tutor a subject that you feel particularly strong in and you just want to make sure that you are on top of it. And I think tutoring is a great way for you to really make sure that you will be prepared for that subject when boards do come around for you. In addition to my studying for physiology, I also did board vitals again. Board vitals because again, the questions are really good and the explanations were really good and it helped fine tune some of the concepts that I was particularly weak in. So fourth topic, microbiology and immunology. So it's like two subjects in one sort of thing. So just focusing on microbiology first. Sketchy, first aid, great golden resources that I use. Love Sketchy because of the visual pictures for that because again, I'm more of a visual learner and I like to watch videos and Sketchy does a phenomenal job in covering most of the bases for all the bacteria, the viruses, you name it for uh, microbiology. In addition, first aid, because f I, I think Sketchy didn't have all the information you needed to, needed to know for microbiology, so I used first aid in addition. So I was taking notes from Sketchy into first aid, so that was the all the bulk of my studying coming for microbiology. In addition, from immunology, I used Boards and Beyond. Boards and Beyond is great. They had a handful of immunology videos, which I watched, I think in about one week. I spread them out and I thought that was definitely more than enough for immunology. So I got my basis for immunology down through those videos, as well as again, board vitals for the questions for that particular subject. Biochemistry. 10% of the boards and for this one I actually didn't put too much stress on biochemistry a lot of the upperclassmen I, I took the upperclassmen's advice on this one and that was just study high yield stuff and with the amount of time I had I, I just didn't want to go through all of biochemistry I'm not I'm not really a big fan of biochemistry to begin with so for biochemistry, I just watched a few videos on high yield topics such as different pathways, different enzymes, different vitamins, different deficiencies from boards and beyond. I think those videos were great and also doing some questions on board vitals as well. So pretty short, but yeah, that's what I use for biochemistry. Pathology, 13% of the boards. For this, I A, heavily relied on a lot of the content knowledge that I learned from class because my professor was very challenging. Um, but with that being said, I did do, I immediately actually jumped into board vitals for pathology, just doing questions on there. And then whatever questions I got wrong, because I conceptually forgot something, I would actually go through pathoma to fill in those gaps in my knowledge. So Pathoma plus Board Vitals was really good combination. And also First Aid. First Aid actually has a dedicated chapter for the foundation concepts for pathology. So that is actually really useful for you to make sure you have a quick refresher. And last topic, Pharmacology, 13% of the boards. Pharmacology, for me, I used a lot of my school notes for this. My professor also created a study guide for us. So I, again, a bulk of my studying came from that, as well as first aid. First aid is actually particularly helpful for pharmacology because they have a lot of mnemonics. And I've, I've mentioned this before in previous videos, or particularly in my pharmacology video, Mnemonics are really crucial in helping me remember just unique properties about a drug, the different ADRs, the different side effects. So creating these mnemonics was great for me to really remember key points about a particular drug. So try to look at first aid for pharmacology if you're not using anything else. Okay, so I just finished the topics and I just want to give you guys some honorable mentions 
First one being the APMLE practice exams. You can actually find two free practice exams, I believe, on the APMLE site. And you should do these exams, I think, in my opinion, because they're the closest thing to the real thing. So I know I did these two, I did both exams towards the end of my studying, but maybe you could do one in the beginning just to see where you're at and then one at the end to sort of sum it up together to see where you're truly at. And then the second honorable mention is Onking. It's just, it's just like Anki, it is Anki, but just filled with all these decks combined by different students for uh, all the different topics that I've mentioned here except for lower extremity anatomy, I believe. I didn't really use Onking, but there are students who swear by it because there are there is a lot of info there and just doing flashcards on the go or quickly doing them rapid fire is a really good way to test your content knowledge. That is all the resources that I have for you guys today. I know it's a quick video, but I just want it to be very quick and very precise with what I was giving you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because we do really appreciate it. And also leave a comment down below for other resources that you believe that other students can be using. Again, I wanna stress this out. These are the resources that I use. This doesn't necessarily mean these are the resources that are right for you. Everyone has a particular way of studying and there are, are multiple resources out there. So find the right resources for you when you are studying for the boards. So if you guys have any more questions, feel free to DM us on Instagram at the podiatry journey and also email us at the DPM journey at gmail.com. So with that being said, I hope you guys take care. Pod Squad signing out.